This is a joint interview with Quentin Flynn for Team Wayfinder and Org 13 Podcast. And today on the show we have Quentin Flynn. Hello everybody. We have partnered with KH Insider and KH 13 and KH Fids to bring you this special interview. So, first question, how did you actually end up getting to decide to do voice acting? Uh, well, that's a good question. I started doing impressions as a young boy because I'd been watching impressionists on TV. I started doing impressions of these impressionists' impressions. I got together with a buddy of mine, Billy Russ, and he's pretty young. We were about eight years old in second grade, and we started compiling lists of impressions. And we watch all the talk shows like uh, Johnny Carson and Mike Douglas and Ruth Griffin and, you know, stuff that's been long off the year. We just do their impressions. And then we'd start doing impressions with family members and friends. And that carried on through grade school into junior high and high school. And we both got into radio, college, TV and film and theater in high school and college. And I got a band uh, and I started doing TV as an internship, a musical video host for an alternative music video program that predated MTV's 120 Minutes. And like I said, I was doing the club scene, rock and roll, having a good time. And then I read in the paper about this thing called voice acting commercial. So I took this voiceover commercial acting workshop. I took a couple of them in Cleveland, where I grew up, and I liked it. And it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles about 10 months out of college that I decided to take another course which was uh, animation voice acting. And this guy Bob Bergen taught it, and he opened up my eyes to a whole new world. Of avenues in which to explore and to let loose with my cadre of voices. And uh, after taking Bob's class some months later, I was encouraged to put together a demo from uh, the demos I already had. And so I worked with um, a casting director named Mary Lynn Weisner, and we put together a commercial demo because at the time, that was really the in to agencies. They were primarily looking for commercial voice demos and put together a commercial voice demo, dialogue stuff, me and another gal. And I went around banging on doors and out of about 15 agencies, half of them wouldn't accept anything I had to offer. Then um, another quarter said, get back to us in six weeks. And then of the other quarter, all of them accepted them. But the one, Sandy Shinar Talent, I ended up unknowingly meeting Sandy herself on the elevator ride up to the office. And she and I got along famously. I dropped off my package. She was interested in listening to the tape just because she was interested in me. She heard what she liked or liked what she heard, had me in for a meeting and recording, and asked me if I would like to sign with her. I said yes. And uh, once I got in there, they had me read all kinds of copy. And she saw my range and then started really promoting me and getting me out there for auditions, not only commercial, but animation. And that's when I started booking things like... Uh, uh, the, the Human Torch for the Fantastic Four. Seriously? Yeah. And that was one of my first series. And then uh, I also uh, booked a spin-off series from the Lion King movie where I played uh, Timon. Oh, no. Akuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. <laughs> so cool. I did about 40 episodes of that. But uh, And the Marvel thing continued. We returned in a, an episode of Spider-Man. And I, again, I got to reprise my role as the Human Torch where I often got to say, Claymore! And awesome. that was a hoot and a holler. And then later on in the video game world, I would go on to play Spider-Man and Venom, which was really cool. So I just stuck with it, and things started changing over time, and the anime world started to rise up, as well as the video game world, which when we began... Uh, neither one of them were happening so much in the state. Well, video games were really primitive. They didn't use characters, you know. They didn't have dialogue. It wasn't cin cinematic like it is now. But eventually it became cinematic, and that's where games like Metal Gear Solid, where I came to be Raiden, and Kingdom Hearts 2, where I came to be Axel, Final Fantasy Advent Children, where they did the CGI film, where I was Reno, tons of other games. Gosh, No More Heroes, where I played Henry, the Irish mobster. And then in, in the anime world, of course, Iruka Sensei and Naruto, uh, Zatch Bell, Dr. Riddles, uh, Blood Plus, Carl the Phantom. There's too many for me to remember. Yeah, that's really ironic that you say Iruka Sensei because I was just playing that game today and I'm like, hey, I know who that is. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Cause we've done a few games. In fact, we just did 
uh, one recently. So it'll be coming, I, I don't know when. That's kind of a long answer to your question, but that really is how I started it out. Theater and improv background, but like I said, going back to when I was a kid, I just uh, was amazed by impressionists and how they could all do these different voices. And that found its way into this world of voiceover. You mentioned Kingdom Hearts 2, and of course, being a Kingdom Hearts themed podcast, we got we got to ask you a few questions about upcoming stuff. Have you been contacted at all about reprising your role as Axel? I haven't. I'm waiting, and I would love to. Yeah. The uh, yeah. apparently the new Kingdom Hearts game is supposedly Dream Drop Distance, and it hasn't been released. If your character uh, Lee or Axel will show up, but that would be really awesome if it did. Gosh, I hope so. I think you guys are probably here before I do. I, yeah, I heard you in another interview. You said that uh, the fans pretty much provide you with uh, info on some of your jobs before you get them. It's yeah, you guys get the inside skinny way before I do. Oh, gamers. I know. This is life of fandom. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You were talking about uh, being in an elevator a while back, and uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of trivia for you. Did you know that that's how Kingdom Hearts actually started? It was a Disney executive and a Square Enix executive met in an elevator and talked about, you uh, serious? about a meeting. <laughs> Are you serious? Such a... Such a simple beginning for such an epic series. Crap. Yeah, it isn't quite a while those things happen like that. Serendipity. Got any tips for up-and-coming voice actors? Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> recommend taking voiceover classes, you know, commercial and animation voiceover classes because you will get all the tips you need and all the direction you need and the skills that you need to really hone your skills. You know, you'll get the direction you need to really work on your chops. And I think they'll provide you the direction on what to do next and what steps to take and which to put in your career and how to make it to the next level. And it's, you know, there are classes in, I don't know, uh, in every city. And I imagine you, know, you can Google search it. I don't know, where are you guys calling from? Everywhere. Yeah, we're all over the world. <laughs> we, got, we got Australia, we got Maryland, Tennessee, Kentucky. Virginia. Norway. Yeah, we're just all over the place, actually. Wow, that's really awesome. So this is global. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're everywhere. I mean, what, you know, where, wherever you are, there they would have to be, I imagine. Someplace close to you, you know, probably uh, the closest major city, you know, you should provide that. Google search with voiceover workshops, and hopefully the people who provide that would then, then have direction for you on where to go from there. Yeah, I'm actually considering trying to go, get, trying to get into some of that stuff. Yeah, and, you know, agencies, you know, I mean, you, you got eventually you make a demo, you know, and then uh, you shop the demo around to different agencies to find representation. And agencies uh, generally sign you, they'll send you out, and if you book a job, it's usually they take 10%. If it's an after a union job, it's plus 10% that they get a commission on. SAG job or Screen Actors Guild, um, they take 10% commission off of what you make. But if any agency asks you for money up front, they're not a legitimate agency. That's not a, a practice that any legitimate agency does. So be aware of that. Good tips. Yeah, I actually, um, I remember looking into an acting agency and, um, they said they needed a upfront fee, and I was like, "Well, that's kind of odd, but all right." And then, so actually, a friend of mine contacted me and said, uh, "No, I've heard about that. Uh, agency is kind of sketchy." Yeah, that's not le they're they're not legitimate if they if they do that. We g we gotta ask. Can you do the uh, "Got it memorized" line? Of course. You ready? Got it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful indeed. Roxas, put on your pants. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the bad girls around the world went squee. Exactly. And then there was the bad big writers who started writing more fan fiction. Oh God, one of those please stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how did you actually get in contact with the Disney team? Well, they got in contact with me actually, and I I auditioned for the role. I don't remember. <clears throat> I don't quite remember if it was through my agency or through an outside casting director, but they booked me for the role, and I came in for the video game, and I, I did not know it was going to take off as big as it did, uh, and I was thrilled. I think the character is fantastic, and um, I think the acting is terrific, all, all the characters, you know. Um, it's unfortunate that we don't get to work together, but the way in which uh, Bob Buckles directed us and the producers worked with him, it seems like we are, you know, we are in the same scene in the same room at the same time. I think it's really good 
action and it's really good drama. When you did the voices, do you go into a studio with the various other voice actors or do you just like send it in? No, we do go into the studio and there's the uh, director, the engineer, and producer. And then there's also a uh, the Japanese team. So you've got the Disney folks and, and the Americans and the Japanese and you have an interpreter. And, and then we're, wor we're working the picture so I've got a television and I'm working too. And I've got my script in front of me, headphones on, and then I'm they'll play a series of beeps in the headphones, usually three, and then you start talking on the uh, fourth imaginary beep, and you have to sync up the words as well as your actions and your acting and your emotions. So it's really quite a challenge, and it takes quite a bit of skill, and it's, all, it's always a great challenge, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, they do us individually. They do individual sessions for all of us, and then they, they cut it all together. But they know what they want, and they know how to make us work off of one another. Uh, this question is from Unit year on KH13, but um, what, did you actually, what did you actually like the most about being a member of the Kingdom Hearts cast? Um, what did I like the most about being a member of the Kingdom Hearts cast? Well, it's kind of hard to say since we were never in the same room at the same time. I guess I just, you know, I like and respect the other actors who've been a part of this project and have done a fine job, uh, and I like the way it all came together. I'm just, uh, you know, honored to be a part of it, and I think it's pretty cool. And I really like the way the fans have reacted to my character as well as some of the others. All right, guys, this has been the first part of our interview with Quentin Flynn, the voice of Axel. We will be trying to upload the rest of the parts within the next couple of days, but... We weren't able to get in all of the questions, but we did get quite a few of your questions in. Just keep listening for your question, especially Daxa from KH Vids. You'll be surprised. See you in the next part.